Church, că nu trebuie să ne-am pis în urmă de pastor, pe că Dumnezeu să și cu Dumnezeu. My life has been poured out. Nobody, it has been poured out. Nobody can gather it. I have committed my destiny. I have committed my work with God. Just like the way water has been poured out, it can never be gathered. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the thanks. Because that is not like unto you. You know, I want to share this with us. God bless you for today. Thank you for all your Father's Day wishes. Church, when my wife this morning and my children came and said, uh, Happy Father's Day! I was shocked. I looked behind me. I said, the, the, Our spiritual father called Father uh, Pastor Macon. He said, No, it's you. I said, Me. Me that have destroyed everything that should qualify me to be a father. They say, you are the best father. I say, wow. Upon all my foolishness, weaknesses, stupidity. And yet, a chief sinner, a former chief sinner, the mercy of God has located me. When I read the scripture, Father, that when truth meets with faith, everything about your sin and weaknesses will dissolve and disappear. When I saw it in scripture, I say, you know me, but the word of God is so true and so great. Church, may the Lord bless you. Amen. As a father, and as you have seen me as your father, I tell you, whatever God has promised me is your inheritance. You will never be sick. You will never have accident. As you live your life in truth and spirit, God will provide everything you need to be blessed, prosperous, favored, and be recognized. You shall be a sought after in the name of God the Father. Everywhere you go, people will look for your God. <laughs> so if you want people to look for you, hold your God so, so well and so strong because people will look for your God in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, God bless you. How many of you have been enjoying this teaching we have been doing? Um, what's the topic again? Seven bad successes in Christianity. I mean, if you have been enjoying it, do you really think it's making an impact? And I told you as I'm preaching this message, some will be throwing stone at me. Religious people, people that uh, because of the experience they have made a doctrine out of the word of God. They are going to throw stone at me. People that are preaching messages to entertain people. You know, most churches today, go to any church today, what the pastor targets. That's why when they prophesy, God said, do you feel good about it? I don't have such time. It's not my business. I say what God says, whether you like it or you don't like it. Have you not had English language say truth is bitter? Or how will you feel when it's bitter? Are you getting it? So these people will throw stone at me. They will all wear jekanov. Advance. I'm not talking about advance. Advance at me. Advance. That's the word I want. I'm, I picked it for. Hmm? English now. <laughs> I pick it from advance. They will always advance at me. Now I made some points as I was teaching you about successes. These are the 
background. A Christian that had not read and understood the entire Bible will probably have a bad success. You are working in a company, you are not ready to read the policies and the procedures. And everything, so I know it already. <laughs> I was going for my first ed training for six hours. Wow! And I was with my teacher in the lift. The person was going to teach me. And uh, I know how to, you know, I tried to use wisdom to flog you sometimes. So we were all there, everybody, you know. I just say, how I wish I knew everything. Everybody found me. I said, I've gotten there. <laughs> I've got in the, in the lift at the city, you know, one of those big buildings. They looked at me. They laughed, some laughs, some use Australian, you know, professional. And my teacher, you know, because I was with her, so she was a kind of, hey, I hope you will not disgrace me. I said, but they said it's only a fool that knows everything. <laughs> that was everybody. I don't want to be a fool. It's only a fool and God that knows everything. It's only God and a fool that knows everything. That was when now you will see it in them that this is not just an ordinary saying. It's something that you need to. I do in a, in a lift. I shouted it. I wish I knew everything. They laughed. This stupid man. I knew everything. I said, but the same is only God and a fool that knows everything. Everybody. Do you know throughout the teaching, throughout the woman as she was teaching us, she was just mentioning it. When you meet with people that knows everything, those fools. <laughs> <laughs> Don't allow them to tell you, this is how, follow the book. And you have a pattern. That's why I preach my gospel. I harass you. Then I give you a food for thought. Before you digest it, say only God and the food. How can contradict him? How can God, the wisest? Yes, if God knows everything. Then if a fool, <laughs> if a fool wants to show you a fool, and that's why a fool say there is no God. I'm the God. <laughs> so please. And when the, everybody was about to lift open, I said, that's why we are still learning. That's why I came to learn. I still want to learn first step. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why we still go to places to learn. That's why we still go to school, because we don't know everything. Kabush, Kabra, Mahandaya. So try. Number two, don't ever do what you will be ashamed of to share with your children. I told you that was the way I behaved. When I entered the car, my dream, just on over. You see, that is not being mean to them. I was ashamed. Because I don't want my children to be mean to people. That's what I'm teaching them. And you know, that correction. Humbling. Ask my wife, I didn't touch her, ask me any problem. I said, how can this one give me to yesterday? Correcting me in Australian community. <laughs> Means I'm not a very good father. No father's day for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> success without godly character is bad success. Success without godly character. You are like computer. You give, you, you receive data and give data. It's a vast subject. Inheritance that ends with the first and second generation is not, is a bad success. At least the Bible, Bible say at least to the third generation. A wise father keeps inheritance for his children's children. I would say a good father. So success that comes with sorrow is a bad success. I'm going to touch a line with this is the area I'm going to touch on in today. Success without a successor is a bad success. And I started with the first one, unrighteous family. The pastor that is preaching, shouting, repent, 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 while his own children are the greatest nightmare in the community. It's a bad success. That's the first bad success. 
Why? The Bible says, by their fruits we shall know them. Don't come on. Don't come. But the respect I, I was I was at the glory school and uh, fervor school. And then one of the teachers told me, if you see how we that kind of faculty is very sweet. Pastor Joseph! <laughs> In Australia, where they call you by your first name. They don't call, they don't regard a title. I said, maybe I'm doing something, maybe they are seeing my children. And every time you see Gloria and the principal, principal talking. And the principal says, my best friend, she, I don't know the way she communicates, the level of. When we come on behalf of Fever, she will say, my only joy is that she has a sister like Gloria. Mm -hmm. Make a lot of sense. So, family should be. I told my wife, I said, the day you divorce me, because even everybody has confirmed that you're a better person than me, <laughs> you are good, you know, that you came to deliver me. So if I refuse for you to <laughs> deliver me, <laughs> I will resign, which is very true. God knows I'm not joking, I'm not lying. So I tried to do everything so that she will not kick me out. <laughs> Amen. Church, the second one is divorcing a Christian spouse. Second, but it's all these things I'm talking about is rampant in our community today. I'm telling you the truth. It's rampant. I know pastors in Africa. I know pastors in Nigeria. Immediately they enter the house, their children they are fighting with them. Pity, 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 pity. They don't care. Leaders will be there. They'll say, leave those Israel children. <laughs> oh boy, leave the Israel children. They are your identity. By their fools, we shall know them. When you divorce your spouse, Christian spouse, I took time to teach, I even did part two of it. So what is today's own? I know that they will throw stone at me. A Christian living in sickness is a bad success. A Christian living what? In sickness. I will show you how sickness comes. How is child of God get sick? Get sick. I will show you how you bring sickness to yourself. But let me tell you something. The hardest being on earth to deal with is man. And the lowest being, the softest being to deal with on earth is the devil. was that important, he would have taken at least 70% of the story in the Bible. But man himself took 70%. The only reason for the Bible is for Jesus to show us the way to the Father. Now, this just was yesterday as I was meditating. Do you know why a lot of people think that if there is problem, if they ever want to do something, shake the world or attack you, God will be shaken. Do you know why? It was yesterday that he dawned on me. It was because of the temptation between Jesus and the devil in the wilderness. That was why people are so confused. Jesus is God. And when the devil was tempting him, he was hungry. So they feel that is how it happened in heaven. They feel that. Are you talking about Not, Jesus is not God. The God in him is Christ. Jesus is just like you and me. It was that because Mary did her work very well, that's why Catholic think that she's a God. Mary is just the same as my mother. The same as your mother. It was just that she did her own very well. Followed what she had, what she was told by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is you, our elder brother. So when people now, that temptation, 
Uh, worship me, you know, when devil was eating his head. Worship, they think that is what is our happens with the little of God. It was just today. Where is all this confusion? Where did they come from? So when the devil is doing anything, they remember the day, 40 days when he was tempting Jesus. Not knowing that it was wearing us to show us what we are going to pass through with the devil. Are you getting any church? <clears throat> I'm here to tell you so that you don't make that mistake. I'm fighting, I'm running my own race. As I'm preaching this, I'm preaching to myself. <clears throat> the third bad success in Christianity is a Christian living in sickness. You see, I, I was reading the books in the Bible. I came to Genesis. I made some notes. I came to. But where I made, I'm telling you, full scratch, full, the note I made in Job was the biggest. Revelation was just coming like, revelation. I got some revelation from Genesis. Genesis was another big book. But it was Job, because it was not Job that I found out how sickness comes. Because God was in black and white in the book of Job. There's nothing. I was thinking when Job, I was thinking when Job, after his temptation, God would not come and say, Oh, my lovely son, oh, you have suffered too much. Oh, my lovely son, oh, you have suffered too much. But do you know what God, the first time God spoke to Job? Do you know the, the way God addressed Job? Maybe we have to see it and see what God did to get Job chapter 30, um, Job chapter 2, uh, no, no, 38. He started speaking to Job 38. He spoke to the devil 1 and 2. <laughs> and I said, Go, you know, you consider myself a Job? And then when devil went to them, start destroying, decaying, and eating Job, God was. <coughs> when would this guy, when would they, the same thing he did at the grave of Lazarus. Look at upon all the graves, the most righteous man in the East. Are you there now? That was the first time God spoke to Job. From the time, it was God that invited the devil to go and tell Job. God did not speak to Job, nothing. We're just watching to see how Job. Job, you have been going to church. Job, you know all the Bible. Job, you are praying in tongues. Job, when you pray, every fast and pray. The Bible said there was no righteous. Now I'm going to, I want you to practice all the power you have gotten from me. And look at it. verse 1. Start from verse <clears> 1. <throat> 38. Verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job. And the Lord answered Job. Out of the whirlwind. Out of the Huawei. Who is this who darkens counsel? Do you see it? Is it a good, is it a way, a good way to start a conversation? <laughs> Somebody that has been suffering. The Bible says when they when they occur, when they occur, we start occurring him. He will go to the beam. The Bible says he will break potter, he will break glass. He will break glass and be using the glass. So blood will be coming just for him to be relieved. From the Okri Potter. <laughs> from the Cotton Cotton Korea. <laughs> oh boy, it was dangerous. Eh? And after Job, the Bible says in verse 15 that those that we are wiser than his father and older than his father came and Job defeated them. Instead of God seeing all these things Job has passed through, instead of when the first time he should have spoken to Job, Instead of saying, oh, my lovely son that have been bullied by the devil, bullied by sickness, oh, come home. He said, God said, who is that? Who? It's just that I've decided to talk to you. If I am a karam hashata ekaya. Now, do you know the way God started? He first of all harassed him. Who is, who is, who is that? You know, that is what you are, you are as an arm robber. Who is not your dog? Who you don't want to see? Is that what you do? When someone knocks at you, wait, 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 w
go. You know why? His prayers has been coming to his top top. But God doesn't want his prayer. God wants to see his mightiness. God wants to see him using the word of God. And that was when I began to wonder, I said, this, God, this man that I just saw family, Jesus, I was from Chapawak, lost his family, <laughs> lost everything. That he ate, you didn't talk to him in verse chapter 3, you didn't talk to him in chapter 4. You didn't, when you now willing, instead of you, according to you, come and shake my hand. And look at the next statement, continue. <clears throat> then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. And the Lord asked, are you repeating what you have read? Oh, no, verse 2, yeah. <laughs> Who is this who darkens counsel with words without knowledge? Uh-huh. Get ready for a difficult task like a man. My job, let's be close. Let's not. <laughs> what kind of God is this? He said, get ready for more, another difficult. Continue. Do you know why God was angry? Will God be angry at something you are doing right? God was angry at him because he allowed the sickness. He allowed whatever the devil was throwing at him. The same way last was. That was why Jesus wept at the blood of laughter. You are my friend, and look at how the devil that shouldn't. I told you the, 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 the hardest person to deal with on earth, the hardest being is man, and the least is the devil. Thank God for Abishab Benson in the house. Thank God for that man. Sometimes you just say this, but before you get to the root of the revelation, why is it? See, I don't want, I wonder why people are wasting their time teaching the monology. Why the only way to know the demon very well is to know Christ. Opposite of Christ is demon. Does that make sense? And God said, draw near unto me. When you draw near unto me, you will be far from the devil. One thing. He did, God, Jesus never, he didn't share your power with the devil. He shared it with men. All authority has been, I have given it to you. They give to the devil. Where is the where did the Bible talk mainly about sickness and uh, 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 everything about sickness? All everything about sickness. Talks, where did the Bible talk about? It? But before that, let me show you something. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, 18 or 18, 14. Get it for me. Proverbs. The person spirit sustains. Which one are you reading? You tell me. 1814. 1814 now. Okay, now. Proverbs 1814. You see? <laughs> um, um, let me just ask a question to tell us how wise we are now. Was it Proverbs what? Oh, 1814. <clears throat> Proverbs. Let me just put it so that. So you see, so it's when I preach that I make notes. <laughs> I don't make notes to preach. <laughs> I preach because I allow Holy Ghost to tell me when you teach me I'm writing also that. Let me ask a question now. Let me ask a question to tell you, to prove to you about this scripture now. And I want you to answer me sincerely. How many of us want to go to heaven? <laughs> you talk behind, you talk behind, you talk behind, you want to go to heaven. How many of us want to go to heaven? <laughs> you see, you see, all, all of us want to go to heaven. <laughs> I went to a very big church, one of the biggest churches in Australia, and they called me to preach. Your anointing is too much. You got to be too much. And I asked this question. How many of you Every one of them. Yeah, Pastor J. I know you came to take us to heaven. <laughs> I say we are already in heaven. That what I'm looking for, I have tested the, the insult in being from third world country. <laughs> that what I'm not praying for is not going to heaven. What I'm praying for is to be first class citizen in hell. We are seated in heaven. I've taught you born again. The day you go born again, sincerely and truly, all of you are born again. I know my sheep. My sheep knows me. I know you. And that was the essence of that teaching.
preach it, born again, so that I will not lose any of you in heaven. You are seated in heavenly places already with Christ Jesus. But what we are now looking for is, I will never allow it. If 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 Vanny want, let him be buy a cave with and so he buy a house and so. Vanny can never be greater than me, see so. I will beat him as my son in heaven. If, my, if Jimmy uses his leg to go everywhere and do four passion and everywhere, he can never be way greater than me in heaven. This is now where I am. For us, so we will all be in heaven. <laughs> but I'm telling you, none of you, your house will be greater than mine. You see the way we talk, because that's what it means. It's not, I do all. Because why? How is it that God chose me to be your pastor? If I don't come home as the leader in heaven and on earth, I mess up. Just like Abraham. And they will go and give him, uh, it's not possible. Go and give him, give uh, Jacob. Look at it, it's bosom of Abraham. Don't have any bosom of Abraham. So Jacob cannot say, my father, no, I gave birth to you. Isaac cannot come and say, no, I gave birth to you. And moreover, Isaac, from generation from Isaac to, they are children of God. But Abraham is the only person that is not a son of God, a friend of God. Read your whole Bible. You see, you're already in heaven. You don't need that. That is why things that are happening to you are happening to you. And what did that place say? Let me show you the way we see it. Proverbs. Mm -hmm. A person's spirits sustains him through sickness. Uh -huh. But who can bear a cursed spirit, crushed spirit? Sorry. Can you, in, in a very simple English, tell me what it means that a person's spirit sustains him in sickness? Just a very. Because you have spirit and you have flesh, physical. Does that make sense? Which one do men seek? Physical. But your real one, real self, is the one more sin. So, in life, why do we get born again? Why is God pushing us? Why is God giving us the ministry of reconciliation? It's so that people will discover that they are not mainly physical, they are spiritual. So that they switch over to the spirit. Does that make sense? So that they will switch over to the spirit. And it means if you are a spirit, you can never be sick. <clears throat> but when you dwell in the flesh, you dwell on the things that give the flesh life. Sickness can attack it. But even at that, when sickness attacks it, use your spirit to destroy it. And people will wonder why. The power of life and it is in the top. You control the mouth. Am I making sense? Now you already explain. Why should you end up being sick? Secondly, Isaiah chapter 15, 53, verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. This were the days I studied and I said, wow. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Who would have believed what um, we just heard? <clears throat> when was the Lord's power revealed through him? No, no, what version are you reading? Uh, 53 1. No, what uh, version? Oh, net. Net. Uh, come, come and read uh, here. Your light here. Who have believed our report to mm -hmm. and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Are you seeing it now? Remember, ask who, how many of us are heaven? All of us are here, which is correct. We understand. We are all, I mean, we want to go to heaven. No, we want to, we want to go, not knowing that we are ready to. The same way, the spirit, we can't be sick. I don't say it out of, I'm not a, a, a radio caster. 
Be shut off what I know. I'm be sure from the beginning. Say what has not blessed you, the car will not bless another person. Say who would, who would believe our report? Who would have believed that? And this was Jesus have not died though. I told you the two most accurate prophets, David and Isaiah. They call them, they call this Emmanuel. His name shall be called Emmanuel. If Jesus has not come, that was so many years before Jesus came. David saw God and Jesus. He said, And my Lord said unto my Lord. Psalms 110. So the man talking now is one of the most accurate prophets. It has not happened then. Who will believe I call? And if you believe it, you will see the power of God upon your life. And what was he trying to say? He was trying to tell us how sickness has been destroyed. How sickness will be hundred percent destroyed? So no one will get here a better phone for the media. Yeah, Marcel is not jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting making sense? Do you get what I'm saying? Isaiah, do you know if as many that we are listening to Isaiah has believed this report that just like telling us now we are in heaven already. How many of us will believe it? That we are in heaven. Because we, we don't close our eyes and see shining, flying, shining, uh, uh, flying. At least God will show us Peter Pan and uh, what is the other guy? <laughs> the shining nose and uh, that goes with Peter Pan. That one that fly. <laughs> Something like that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Something like that. You don't, you, so you don't feel you are in heaven. But everything happening to angels are happening to you now. So take care of what I'm saying now. Yeah. I'm not making sense. Isaiah was in the Old Testament telling us how God is going to destroy sickness. <coughs> Who would have believed our report? If you believe it, you will see the power of God now. If we start reading all of them, we might not have time. But let's go jump to chapter 5. Okay, let's, okay, let's just read it to 5. Huh? Sir. Yeah. <clears throat> now, look, he has started telling you what is going to happen. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He's talking about Jesus. And as a root house and dry ground. Uh -huh. But when he will appear, look at how he will look, how people will see him. He has no form, no form. No form. He will not. He is coming like a beggar. He's coming like no bag. When we shall see. And you will be born in a manger. There is no beauty. There's no beauty when you see him. We should desire him. That we should desire him. He's despised and rejected of men. He will be despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. A man of sorrow he will be. And acquainted with grief. Yes. And he hid, as it were, our, face, our faces from him. Ah, Jesus. He was despised. And esteemed. And, and we esteem him not. And we esteem him not. Because you know. He has borne our griefs. Surely he has done what? Isaiah was not talking as if it's going to happen. She was, it has already happened. The Bible says, who was slain before the foundation of the earth? Yeah. He carried our sorrows. He carried our sorrows. Yeah, we did esteem him. Yeah, we did not esteem him. The swing of God uh -huh. and afflicted. It was God himself because God wanted to forgive our sin. I mean, God, God wanted to throw us away. He said, God, kill me and take them. And for God so loved the world that he now chose to give Jesus. To gain the whole world. Continue. But he, but he was wounded for our He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace. I was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. No, no, no. Go to the left. No. See. See. <coughs> he shall see. He shall see of the travail of his soul. Who shall see? He shall see. Of Who shall see? Uh, I'm not sure. God. <sighs> Jehovah. You got what God was saying. God says, I'm going to take you. I'm going to kill you so that others will live. But not only, the water and the blood that will come out of you, because of it, your people, are they are healed. No sickness again will ever come to them. The same way, remember, who wants to go to heaven? Why are you already in heaven? Then you can't be sick. 
Am I making sense? That's the way we see them. Even at the thought of you already in heaven now, if I come and tell you now, oh, devil is coming, he's already in a district, he's bulldozing everywhere, you start panicking. You forget you're already in heaven. So when God said, I had an agreement with Jesus, when they started dealing with him, when the process started to bring out blood and water. <laughs> oh boy, if you read Roman, there was never a torture. Do you, know you know when Isaiah wrote this, there was not a torture like that. When Isaiah was prophesied, when David was prophesying in 22, Psalms of the same thing, there was never a torture in the Roman, there was never a torture. Like that. The Bible says here that his face was turned like that of an animal because of the way they were using their hand. You know, army. They tra- it's not the training of the army, to- they do technology training. <laughs> that one is they use their hand, remove it, the flesh will go out, then it will grow again, become some pepper. <laughs> the story says that they use their bare hand. Jesus. <coughs> Full of flesh. And that's they were doing it. Look at what happened. Verse 11. He, he shall see the travail of his soul, the punishment, the way they are dealing with him, and shall be satisfied. So, what does that mean? God is already satisfied with the, the price Jesus paid for your sickness. Why are you not enjoying it? And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify men. What me and you are doing, what Ambition Basin did. Because of his death, a lot of things shall be revealed to them, shall be revealed to his children. For he shall bear their iniquity. Am I making sense? Have we, have we concluded here that according to the scriptures, not according to my teaching now, but according to the scriptures, we don't have any right to be sick or to claim we are sick? Now, how does it creep in? The book of James says in verse 1 and 2, count it all, James. Can you read it? James chapter <coughs> 1. I'm about finishing. This is very good. So that we have our meeting. Chapter 2 or chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 2. <coughs> read to 4. My brethren, uh-huh. count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Uh-huh. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, now, entire and wanting nothing. Now, listen, eh? you see, you just like a pastor encouraging a member. Say, so, can't you tell them maybe a member that he committed sin? Or a member that uh, through his mistake he became sick? And for the pastor, like I told you, I was talking with somebody. Africa, if my fellow African, these are the people that when they came here, they say, No, we can't be pastors again. So when I was talking to him, he said, uh, 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 This is just uh, to make yourself happy. <laughs> so just like a pastor that found out that this sickness that his or her member mm-hmm. is passing through, you know, he's trying to kill the member, and the pastor now want to go and encourage the member, and he says, sweetheart, count it all joy when you fall into this kind of temptation, as if it is God that gave it to us. I might make this, if you don't get the message here, yeah, you are missed it. The pastor encouraging you and saying that, uh, count it all joy, even as you're passing through this temptation, this, that, 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 it doesn't mean that it was God that gave it to you. It was you that brought it upon yourself. That's why they're going to throw stone at me at this teaching. Though. Because these are the things you don't hear. People, pastors will not tell you the truth. Count it all joy. Hey, I know what you're saying. You know, I've been in a church where somebody is dying of cancer and the pastor, when the church closes, please go and encourage her to die. Yo. Go, when you finish, go. The pastor that's supposed to come, command the cancer to go. Uh, you know, this is our sister. The doctor has given her 
10 days to die. When you finish here, go to her house first and encourage her to die. It doesn't say encourage her to die, but that's exactly what is insinuating. We have agreed that she died on the tent. <laughs> go and it's, it's a bad success for both the pastor and both the Christian and both the church. It's a bad success. He said, the Bible said, God saw the traveling of his soul. And he said, none of you shall be sick any longer. Not only that, when you go to minister to people, there will be knowledge that you have never experienced. There will be power that will follow you, and you will turn many to Christ. Count it all joy, oh sister. Sister, you're dying of cancer. And oh, oh. You tell the person the truth, he's not God. For the part of life and death. You see the thought. Moses said, choose you there for whom you will serve. Do you know when you have refused to know more about God, you have already made a choice to fail? When you have refused to know more about God, all your Christianity life is just to come and judge. You don't want to know God. You don't want to know God to where the message, the truth is preached. You have already decided to fail. Are you there? Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's go to verse 12. <coughs> of that James 1. I have a lot. Blessed is the man that enjoyed temptation. You see, it started again. Listen now. Church, this is where you going to blow your mind. Verse 12. What did he say? Blessed is the man that enjoyed temptation. Uh-huh. For when he is tried, mm -hmm. he shall receive the crown of life. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Is that why? <laughs> Read it again. Let me show you. The person that Pastor came to encourage you. Yes. Blessed is the man that enjoys temptation. Uh -huh. Blessed when is you, my sister, my brother, ah, enduring this cancer, enduring this sickness. For when he is tried, mm -hmm. he shall receive the crown of life. Uh -huh. If you don't give up, if you keep on coming to church and die with the cancer without sinning, you receive a crown of life. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the nonsense we are preaching. Continue. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Uh -huh. Let no man say when he is tempted. Are you getting it now? God is coming play now. I am tempted of God. Don't ever say it's God. Don't ever say God allowed it. Don't ever say because you have all power and authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome them. He said even when you drink deadly poison. I can't die of poison. I can't die of sickness. No man can kill me. Any hand that wants to raise his hand to touch me shall we die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that hand repent. I'm a child. The devil is not in charge. Never you say that I've been tempted by God. God is trying my patience. That was what we are told when we are growing up as baby Christians. When we see problems, challenges, look at it. They never see it's God. Continue. For God can, cannot be tempted with evil. Continue now, you get now. Neither tempt he any man. Uh -huh. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his When he is drawn away from his faith. When he has no knowledge about how God oppressed. When my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Stop blaming God for that to your problem. Stop blaming for that charge and stand as a child of God. And begin to shake up the beast into the fire. I cannot be Satan. I will not die of this cancer. I will not die of this diabetes. I those that know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploit. Where are we dying of? He said, the earth. The thing, everything about the earth, they have removed it out of course. 82 verse 5 of Psalm. I told you you are God, but you do not believe me. And because you have refused, you will die like a bear. Psalm 82, 5 to 7. Because you have refused to accept that you are. Don't say that God is tempting. You have refused to accept your God. Don't say God brought you. You have you refused. You go to you are going to church only to gossip. You are going to church only to for to be a bishop. You are going to church only to be recognized. You are, oh, this one that started yesterday. They are they giving him altar. Me and behind. Oh boy, that doesn't mean anything. It's your relationship with God that matters. 
It doesn't matter, you can be. The Bible says John the Baptist was at the place of his training in the wilderness on his day of showing forth. What of if his day of showing forth has not come and the people he trained, it was their day of showing forth? God said, Why should you tell me who to pay first and who not to pay first? It's my business, it's my money. Don't say that God is tempting you. Say you are all God's. But because you have refused to pay the price. Yes, this week that just ended. Thank God it has ended. I didn't rest for one hour. Comfortably. Through or from Monday to my wife will say, What? I said, I'm not a I'm not on my own. I'm a God, small letter G. I can't be exhausted. I say, just keep me, making me happy. My strength is the joy of the Lord is my strength. My strength is not in muscle. That's why Jimmy's muscle. He can carry me and double me now. That's the whole world. My power is in joy when I'm happy. Joy of the Holy Ghost. And I told my wife, I said, I don't know why. This my flow of joy can never stop. It has never stopped. It can't stop. No situation stops it. Now. Don't say God, because God can never read it. Let's wish it. <coughs> Before I, let me now show you an example of how Job now brought what came upon him. Read again. Yeah, read it again and the next one. For every man is tempted mm -hmm. when he's thrown away of his own lust. Your own lust. You just let me give you an example. You might be you might be in Australia here and you are seeing your men's driving car. Mm -hmm. Or you feel you are suffering so much, or you are being cleaning and they are all working in the bank. You started lost them. You shouldn't look at any man. You should look at Jehovah that called you. I don't even check that because my background is not the same with them. Where I came out from Mufila, they didn't come out from there. Their parents, my parents was not their parents. In my family, we are 10. They are old, they are my two. And we have a culture that we look after our parents and make sure they're happy before we start building our whole family. That's our culture. Australia might not like it, but that's our culture. And that's why they are always alone in their problem. Because in our problem, a family, we, we solve it as a family. Both extended and all, we solve it. That's why when we want to do anything, you see everybody will contribute, cook something, do everything. It's not the Australian kind of bringing plate, you know, bringing plate. We talk about, you know, we contributing everywhere. The make sure when you're going to buy the thing, when you're doing anything, when you're building anything, they, they, they must have a share. It's not when they have already finished everything, you come with their popcorn and they all this and say you're bringing black, you know, bringing black, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always explain how white people, the people that speak with their nose, <laughs> Why we speak with our mouth, you know? <laughs> we speak with our mouth. <laughs> but that's the way we understand it, you know? So when my children they are speaking their Australian language, my mother will say, Who are these people that speak with their nose? <laughs> anyway, that's, are you going know what I'm talking, church? Don't ever come and see. It has also made it very clear in church of Revelation. Papa, Papa, I saw you on television. If I beat you, you go and walk on yourself so that tomorrow I'll see you on television. Every day you have been watching me for 50 years. I've never watched you one day. What kind of son are you? Are you really my son? <laughs> Papa, <is> that asking? <laughs> are you really my son? You have been watching me 20 years on the television. I've never watched you even on advertisement. <laughs> Every day, come, Papa, Papa. He showed us. He said the same God that is, is working in your life. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can finish that place. <clears throat> that place will hold me for three hours. Mm -hmm. Then the last, I mean, then when last had conceived, the three fourth sin. When lost, you see? <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> When you keep on thinking out of the box as a Christian, 
You keep on thinking, you know, because you're in Australia. No, it's just, it's just some foolish pastors that came and left Africa. They forgot that when they were there, uh, uh, when they were signing their visa, they were praying, God, if, if I could enter this country, I will serve you. I will, uh, that's why Nigerians are respecting me today. They told me, this is your born again. I give you one year. This is over 10 years now. I have not changed. I give you one year, you follow us as that. You know, one of them, I saw him, he married, he's married. You know, he sneaked out with a girl, you know. He was uh, in the night, where I was, when I was still doing cleaning job. I said, I said, brother, what are you doing? You're married, yeah! He said, but he said, why are you shouting? I said, if there's anything wrong about this. Very soon you will join us. I said, oh, bro brother of Jesus. Very soon. He said, you think I'm going to see that? You just arrived. Very soon you drop the club. And you just... Till today, I have not seen any club. Till today. I don't need there. Why? You know what I said? Why seek the living among the dead? What am I doing here? I don't have. And what, what do you think you'll be thinking now? It's like this one is different from other pastors we know. It's like this one, this one, this one. And they are still, the same way I, I was from the day I entered China, it's the same way my goodness I've not lost one percent. Instead, I freeze on it. I told you that place you go to finish it out before I talk, I will not talk again. Then, when last had conceived, mm -hmm. bring forth sin, mm -hmm. and sin, when, it, when it's finished, mm -hmm. bring forth death. You see now, Job's own did not bring death, Job's own he survived it, and God said. You would have had a bad success if I allow you to live, live the 70 years I have planned for you. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says God gave Job another 140 years added to his 70 years already to make a good success. How many of us will receive that kind of grace? It's only God. So if you mess up with your first 70 years, so Job lived 300, 210 years instead of. 70 years, according to the Bible, if you could do the calculation well. And not that. The Bible says, and not that. So how did God Job got involved? How is he here? Pastor, compare this, what you have read is our lost. Quickly go to Job chapter 3, verse 25. Then that will be the last verse. Job 3, 25. <clears throat> then I'll finish. No, we are finishing quick today, then I will enjoy my coffee. Praise the Lord. It's still hot. It's a flask. Are you there? Yes. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. Jesus, don't say that. Don't say don't don't say that. Don't say that. For the things I greatly fear. Where a lot of us are missing. Remember, it's your lost. You start thinking out of the bus, out of the abundance of the heart, the mass people. Pastor Joseph, are you telling me now that you are paying off a debt, you are not afraid of bankruptcy? I, it will come. But what I'll do? Resist the devil. Keep, keep, and he will flee. There will be fear, but what will I do? Resist the devil. Keep, keep, come. The war that I've written in my heart will start fighting with the fear. Job started seeing other pastors getting sick and dying in sicknesses. And he started taking out of the bus. Does it mean God is a liar? Does it mean fear started? Why? Listen now. Fear is the platform that legally gives the devil power to destroy you. Faith is the platform that legally gives Jehovah the authority 
to take it to your case because if your faith says yes, God cannot say no. So Job started living the thought of the promises of God in Isaiah. That God has already accepted the pains of Jesus and wiped away your sicknesses forever. Job started disbelieving that he is a spirit. Remember, he said the lost. We start thinking, we go out of. Before you start thinking it, you now bring what really target that James, how it works. Start from our lost. Mm-hmm. Chapter, chapter one. Oh, you started. I wanted you to start from two because you are going to finish. We are still going to go to twenty something. Mm-hmm. <coughs> which which verse did you stop? Oh. Where you said lost, you know? Oh, that was fifteen. Uh huh. Fifteen. Okay, read again. Uh huh. <coughs> then when lost has. Have conceived. You moved into you, you are moving away from the boss. You are moving away. You are moving to the boss now. You but bring, you, you bring forth sin. You bring forth sin, then you see. Another thing is coming up. You see, fear is now taking, is destroying you. You don't continue. And sin, when it is finished. When sin is finished, bring forth death. It will kill you. It's a trap. I remember in 2000 and uh, in 2001, I was praying. I was praying, I was praying uh, about something and I slept, when I slept, I saw the people I was praying against, because I was praying that they would not do anything. And I saw in the, where they were. You know this Nigerian movie, I know Nigerian movie also heard, because I was lost in it. <laughs> I saw them in Calabar, in the so called Calabar. Calabar, when you talk about Calabar, it means their own juju is somehow effective, you know? So, and they were in the middle. He was a lady anyway, and he was in the mirror, I was saying, kill this man. It was a dream. That was why I even am sharing it, otherwise it would have been Nigerian movie story. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the man that he wanted him to kill me when I appeared in the mirror was saying, you are wasting your time trying to kill him here. Go and make him to see. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, if you see him, I don't, you don't even need to come here to kill him. If you just make the young man to sin, and I'm telling you, that lady was the only lady in my life that accused me of having sex with her while I never had sex with her, publicly. So that was became the thing. That was how I knew that that was a trick. So all that she was planning was to lure me into having sex with her, and then her plan would be. And as I'm telling you, and as I was standing on the last day, to do you know before God, I never. So after the dream, that was why I said, even if he's the last person on earth. So I started running away. I said, never. How is it? See, you're wasting your time coming to me to kill him through this mirror. Just go and cause him to see him. Because he's, he's a very precious servant of God. To whom much is given, much is expected. Just go and cause him to see you, see what is going to happen. Even the devil has been waiting for him for a long time, for more two years ago. The devil just killed him. You don't need to come here. I started understanding what will happen to me if I move away from the boss as a child of God. My thought, are you getting it now? That was what happened to J.G. David. Uh, Imagine if I come to Australia and say, oh, because when you pray for people, they are not healed, then be, hey, it's happening in Australia, it's going to happen in my church. He said, you are now lost. You are moving away from it. The devil is luring you out from the real thing. That is why I can't forget this teaching. The man of God said, one of the ways in America, when they want to train you as a uh, jet fighter or whatever, the last, one of the last and many felonies. They will give you the training, they will be singing it from the beginning, you will know that never ever you remove your eyes from your compass. Despite how clear you feel the road is. 
Because that compass is what? So the last training will be the weaken your memory. I don't know the injection they give you. <clears throat> and that your memory, you will be able to succeed only if you look at that compass. That's the last, one of the last things. The man it was the Air Force stuff. So you see, many will think because it's like when you are drunk, you think you have clear eyes. <laughs> How many is this? It's, it's five, five V, five V. <laughs> Are you getting it? So when you enter, they will tell you, warn you, your life depends on you. You see, a foolish one of them, when they come out and confess why I fell was, it was very clear, I was in the road. But he didn't know there was injection given. When you enter this world, there is injection of flesh. You don't be whom you are. It's only when you look at the compass of life, Bible. Whether you know it or not. As long as you keep on looking, the Bible is like a mirror. The more you look at it, you become what you are seeing in the Bible. You think I'm making sense? That's how people get sick. A lot of bad news. Just like coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Oh, I, I can't escape this one. Fear. Out of the abundance out of the heart, the mouth speaking. David Nash, uh, Job now said, what I greatly fear. At the beginning, that was how we attacked him. What I greatly fear has come. Instead of David to say, the Bible says, you, you, you know, um, you shall have whatever you say. It doesn't matter what you see. Imagine in that compass, uh, what they are seeing is, oh, the road is clear. But when they look at the compass, like I said, leave the compass. The one I'm seeing is clear and better than I have made my choice. Don't make any choice to leave the Bible. You're making choice into destruction. You're making choice into hell. Don't make any choice to leave God. Don't make any choice that is against the will of God. You don't know when you read the Bible one, once, there's a different revelation. If you read it twice, there's a bigger revelation. If you read it, you can't stop. Don't, you can't, keep on reading it. There's benefit every day. No matter, you don't get tired. Do you know when you read the word of God, it may enter from you, it cleans, it cleanses you without doing anything. Enters. It's a life. When life enters, that cleanse is appear. Even no that benefit. Because of that, read it every day, every time. For your cleansing. It's not like ordinary book. It's the word of God. Living, alive, active. And when you bring it into your body, Comes a light. You start fighting any negative thing. Imagine if you are reading this, not using it to sleep. Reading it every day. Cleansing. So I'm here to challenge you. If you know the God I know, it is illegal for you to be sick. You are both sick. And as you hear this and believe it, who would have believed our report? Watch out your life. No sickness can ever get near you. No sickness will get near your family. No sickness will come near you. When the thought comes, flush it away. The word that I've written in my heart, that I will not sin against you. Fight it like cancer, because that's where it is. Anything that comes to turn your imagination against the will of God, and it starts here. If you win it here, you have won it everywhere. You have won it in your body. Whether it comes like a cancer first, you have destroyed it. Men are a living with death. I have seen dead kidney come back to life. I have seen dead liver come back to life. I have seen diabetes run away. I have seen, what have I not seen? The God that I'm preaching to you, which was the God that my father, Archbishop Bessie, that was a preach, is the same yesterday, today, and forever more stand up church shaka burama this is the top bad success in christianity a christian living a diseased life or sick life it's not the will of god because he has already dealt with it even before jesus came physically and the lord bless you Amen. but the lord causes his face to shine upon you May not make you an eternal excellency. May everywhere you go, may you become a sought after. May what God is doing in your life be something that will attract many to Jesus. May you be 
a standing Bible that people will stand and read. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church.